Hey guys, and welcome back to AFC Greg's Season 2 today. The beginning of a new era after our shortcomings last season is what I will say and what I'll put it down to. If you missed any of last season, click the link up here and it will show you uh, probably episode 1 and then there'll be a playlist with all of the Greg stuff on it and you can watch all the way through Greg's. If you missed our last episode, episode 8... It was a season bumper finale. We had plenty of chances to get promoted. Didn't work out in the way that we wanted to. We remain in the seventh tier of English football, which, you know, is kind of okay because it means the series doesn't bomb forward too fast. And I know nobody really wants to watch someone just be instantly successful with no reason for it. So, um, yeah, we've got, we've got a few things to sort out. We've got transfers in this episode. We've got the first game of the season. We'll see how we stack up against next season but our main star man's gone a couple of our main star men are gone you'll see what i've done in the transfer window let's roll the intro So, it's not been the best summer. I'm not really sure how to judge my team so far. I don't really know. We'll see how it goes first couple of games of the season. But the first thing you'll notice, if you have been watching us so far, is we have changed formation. Uh, we were playing uh, this rather lovely 4-1-2-1-2 diamond wide formation, which I'm a big fan of and has worked for me a lot in the past. However... As we switch into this formation, I just want to get a few more players involved in attack and I want to dominate the midfield a little bit more. It seemed quite a lot like we were just kind of doing a lot of attacking, but then when we lost the ball, we had nothing and loads of balls over the top, loads of balls in behind, loads of players just able to pass through the middle. Fed up with that. I want it to change. That's why I've gone with this formation. We're still positive. We're still playing a little bit direct. We're still crossing early, that kind of thing. But this is the kind of team we are going with. That you'll, you'll see that there has been a few ins and outs. So let's go into the transfers um, and look at the transfer history. And uh, first things first, you will see that a couple of players have left on loans. But let's switch into the previous season. And here is where we've lost a few very, very decent players. So Craig Hall uh, has left. Central attacking midfielder. Very, very good central attacking midfielder. He was good last season. One of our best players. He's gone to Reading. And he's gone to Reading for £5,000. Not great, but sell-on fees are there. The main man, and the and the one that makes me want to cry, is Michael Taylor has unfortunately left us. And uh, look at this. 94 recommendation. Look at these stats, though. I've never seen a player so good playing in such a low league and he has gone to Leeds where perhaps he belongs. 13 appearances and 15 goals for Greg's last season. He ended up on over 20 in all competitions. It's a big loss for us. It really is a big loss for us. Things like bravery of 17 and determination of 18 you just don't get in these lower leagues. So having him go was pretty gutting. And then we've got a couple of, rid of a couple of players who uh, we don't really mind. Stuart Dalrymple is another one that I'm really gutted about. Uh, 10k for him. Again, lots of sell-on fees. Goalkeeper was decent when he came in. He's not unbelievable. He is replaceable, I think. Whereas I think some of the other two might be a little bit more difficult. And Pritchard as well, right midfielder. I converted him to a right mid because his stats were not of the uh, striker that he wanted to be with. Seven finishing, seven composure, that kind of thing. Seven first touch. Wasn't into that. Would have rather have his pace on the wing and get his crossing up. Didn't really get his crossing up, to be honest. But uh, yeah, he has now gone to Blackburn Rovers. So they've all gone to the Championship. In fact, I think maybe Taylor's gone to the Premier League. Are Leeds still in the Premier League? Leeds, are they still in the Premier League? They are. They are still in the Premier League. So he is a Premier League man. I wonder if we can... I haven't tried this yet. Perhaps we can loan him. He's 16, probably not. No, yeah, okay. We've lost a load of players, but we also have brought a few in. So back to the transfer history. Let's flick over to this view where you've seen we have brought in seven players there and then 
all of the players down here. Um, Bale as well, who we brought in one game before the playoffs, and he played a couple of the playoff games. He's pretty damn good in the centre of midfield. I imagine he'll play a big role for us this season. Um, so on here, uh, we have Jamie Nash. Jamie Nash is a striker. We have loaned him from Wrexham. 13 finishing, 14 acceleration, 14 pace, good first touch, good heading. He's going to be a backup, really. He's not, he's not perfect. He's a young striker, perhaps it will be an okay signing for us probably not though um blakeman however very good signing left back very rounded stats across the board like to see his stats five foot eleven you know decent acceleration and pace for this level very good corners very good crossing he can play further forward as well which is good we've got claxton on the other side very similar player to be totally honest a little bit shorter a little bit faster but all of his other stats are very similar. Can't quite take as many set pieces. But he is going to be playing that right back role. Um, Fitzsimmons is a goalkeeper. We needed a new goalkeeper. We've brought one in who I think is a very good goalkeeper. He looks like he's very rounded in the stats. He was better than Dalrymple on a lot of his stats. He's also got really good pace and acceleration. So we'll play him in that sweeper keeper role. Which I think he will benefit from, from if I put him on sweeper keeper support. Look at this acceleration and agility. Those are good stats. We'll see how he does. Um, then we also have Sean Reed, who is another central midfielder. Now that I'm playing centre midfielders, I needed to bring a few in. Again, very rounded, but six foot four. I like that. I like a tall midfielder who's going to be a bit of a boss man in the midfield. Good to see. Good teamwork, good work rate, good positioning, good vision. All of that kind of thing. Love to see it. Uh, Lebron Mbeka. Uh, again, Central attacking midfielder, but I'll probably play him more like in the midfield as a Mazala. He's a good Mazala. I'm looking to play two Mazalas this season. Interesting, but I want them to feed out and just overload those wings. The wings are going to get overloaded, and then we're going to bomb balls in for a Yinsan. That is going to be my tactic for this season. Molas off the bench. Um, because we haven't been able to secure a striker. Uh, Brad Jackson as well on the right wing to bring a little bit more depth to the right side. He is very good. 13 crosses, 14 acceleration, 14 pace, decent passing, decent technique, good off the ball, good flair. I like the look of Brad Jackson. He's been doing well in preseason as well. So those are the real changes that we have. We've also had a couple of players come back from loan better than they were when they left. So Tom Lysett, for example, we signed him and then immediately loaned him out last season. I imagine he'll probably get a lot more game time this year. He is pretty good. I understand you can't see his stats. Um, because they're behind my head but there you go there they are so six foot four with 10 strength 10 stamina 10 pace natural fitness 12 12 on the jumping reach 11 balance 11 agility and 10 acceleration those are the kind of stats in this league in that position that will do you well and he can he can you know he can position himself he can't pass yet i'd like him to be able to pass a bit more more of a no-nonsense center back he will certainly be the backup this season although uh cammy cummings great name um, is beginning to do a similar thing. He's just not quite as quick. He's 16, though. He's got a lot more development to do. His passing is slightly better. Eight passing, you know, decent positioning. Needs to improve his positioning, I'd say. Really good tackling, good work rate. Uh, strength is something else that needs to be improved as well. So him and um, Lysit will be in and out of the team, I would imagine. Waters, of course, came in at the end of last season to play left back. I imagine he will play a lot of games this season we've got nasri the 16 year old uh, irishman who came through our youth academy nobody's come in for him yet good he's good i'm happy to keep him happy to keep hold of him although he's he's supposed to be learning crossing he's not really learning it so yeah overall i think we've done okay we've managed to keep uh owen james so far the central defensive midfielder who has played caps for the welsh under 19s he could potentially have a few offers on him. He's had a couple, but I've managed to keep him so far. We shall see how we do. But for now, let's get into our first game of the season after I just show you how we've done in preseason friendlies. Not very well. However, we have played teams above us. So I've, I always try and get as much money as possible from the games in preseason. So I'm trying to pick home ties against really big teams if I can. So we played Portsmouth and, and lost 3-2 and they played their first team, you know, as did Nottingham Forest, lost 1-0. Leeds played uh, their first team mostly, won 4-2. But look, we got an own goal. It was pretty unlucky. We conceded two penalties to Pablo Hernandez. You know, a bit of a weird one. And uh, yes, Taylor did come on against us. He didn't score though, so ha. Um, West Brom beat us 3-1. We drew 1-1 with Sunderland. 
I think that's a pretty good game. 0-0 draw with Trafford and a 3-0 defeat to our parent club, Salford. First game of the season then, let's take a look at the um, schedule. We play Basford, who if you remember, stopped us winning the league last year. So let's try and get some revenge against them. On the last day of the season, we couldn't beat them and that was why we didn't unfortunately get promoted. So let's get some revenge on Basford and let's see the first game of the season. Let's do this. So this is the team that lines up. It's a Yin San at striker, Nasri on the left side, Jackson, uh, the new boy on the right. Then we've got Bale and uh, Mbeka in the Mazala roles. Either of them should drift either way towards the wings to support those wings to support that overload. Owen James will hold in the middle. Then we've got Blakeman at left back who probably will switch between him and Matty Waters across the season. Then we have... Innocent Nogomorakitsa, as I enjoy saying his name, he has actually improved so much I'm willing to play him in the left-sided centre-back position. Isaac Ward, who is here, is not quite as good as he seemed and he made a lot of mistakes towards the end of last season, so I was keen to replace him. Malokwu stays as our right centre-back. We've got Claxton at right back and Fitzsimmons in goal. Malass is on the bench, McGowan's on the bench, Sean Reid's on the bench, Cummings and Waters... And that's how we're going to line up. So let's submit the team and get into our first game of the season. Come on, the Gregs. New season. We want to win the lead this year. The teams are out then at the bakery against Basford. No, it's not at the bakery. Sorry, it's at Basford's ground. Again, starting away from home last season. We got a nice little draw away from home. We were okay with that. And then we got our first win at the bakery. So can we do something this season? Nasri comes away with the ball in the left back position. Not the best clear of his life. Law has it now. He plays the ball forward. Headed down. Not great by James. Can we win the ball back here in the midfield? And as you can see straight away, there's a lot of players in this midfield position, which is what I'm trying to do. Overload a little bit in the midfield and hopefully we can be okay. Howes, we're on get stuck in as well. I'd like to see a few more feet in. Mm, okay, as I said that, that was the worst slide tackle I've ever seen. Good save from Fitzsimmons. Hopefully a good goalkeeper is what we brought in at the very least. And uh, yeah, we go until the end of the highlight. And that is Basford's first chance of the game. Greg's his first chance now. And Ngomra into the penalty area, headed away. Only as far as Nasri. Again with Ngomra Kitsa. Back to Bale. Oliver James. Uh, Owen James, sorry. Here's Innocent. Nasri. Keeping the ball here nicely. Keep going, Greg's. And Becker. He's happy to drop back. Blakeman with a big ball out towards Jackson. Bradley Jackson gets into the penalty area. Good cross in. Oh, Yinsan over the bar. Greggs' first opportunity of the season goes begging. But it's encouraging. That's the kind of chance that I want to see us be, uh, be able to create as we go into this highlight for Basford by the looks of it. Teague. Good tackle from Mbeka, but he's not managed to keep the ball. Gold throp. Thorpe, sorry. On the insans, pick the ball up from Goldthorpe's bad pass back. He's not got a load of pace, but he does get the shot away. It's wide. Not the best from Josh Insan. Ticking down to half time, but we've got a corner whipped into a Yinsan, and there it is! First goal of the season, and it's the big man up front. There's a reason I chose to play a big man rather than the slightly faster Molas, who perhaps doesn't have that aerial presence that I need someone like a Yinsan to have. He's playing target man. Love to see it. Great corner in. And he sees that our corner tactic is still working and we go 1-0 up at half time. It's been a good half, not bad from the Greggs boys. Corner again, Blakeman to whip the ball in into the second half. Yinsan's there again, <laughs> come on. I'm happy to do that all season, just whip it in to the near post. Blakeman proving that he could get a good corner in. Great cross in, easy header. It's just easy, isn't it? It's just easy, easy, easy dubs for the boys. Probably time to get our first changes on. A couple of you said you wanted to see more of the changes that I make throughout the season. Mostly I just do it just for fitness. That's why I don't tend to show you that much. But um, we're going to get McGowan on, I think, uh, in place of... I was going to bring on uh, him off for Nasri, but actually it's probably better if I bring him on for... No, we will bring him on for Nasri, which put Jackson on the other side. Put McGowan on at right wing. And I'm also going to bring on Waters um, to swap for Blakeman, simply because Blakeman... He's booked and I don't want him to get sent off. That's what we'll do for now. A Yin San's on a hat trick. I'm not going to take him off. We'll go into the rest of the game. Like final half an hour. Throw in then for Waters. He throws it in nicely to Jackson. Back to Waters on this wing. Can he get a ball into the penalty area? Probably going to have to beat a man. He does do though. A Yin San is there and he probably should have his hat trick. He doesn't. 
And Greg's is still 2-0 up with 15 minutes to go. Now, Ian San is struggling now. I don't really want to bring him off, but I am going to because he is... You know what? No, because he's on a hat-trick, I'm not going to. I'm going to bring on Cummings instead of Ngomara Keitsa, who is now looking pretty poor fitness-wise. We'll bring on Cummings. We'll keep Ian San out there. Maybe he can get a goal. And if he needs to rest a little bit in the week, we can play Malas. They're both very good strikers. We should be okay. Throw in then for Waters. Throws it into Bale. Flicked onto you, Ian San. Can he turn? Gets it back to Waters. Into the penalty area. Ian San's there. And there he is. And that's why we kept him on to get his hat trick. Confidence boost at the start of the season. It's his 50th league goal of his career. Not for us, obviously, of his entire career. But a lovely little goal. Flicked onto a Yin San. He was sensible enough to play it back out. And Waters just dinked it back in. Lovely little half volley. Goal he probably should have done better. But we're not going to say anything about that. Yes. 3-0 in the game. And we're not done yet. Fitzsimmons goes long in search of McGowan. McGowan gets the ball on the right-hand side. What can he do with it here? Great ball in. Oh, just a little bit too early for my liking. Really poor kick, though, from Ren, the goalkeeper. Malokwu dinks it over to Yin San. Flicked onto McGowan. He's got past his man. What can McGowan do here? Great finish from the 16-year-old Scotsman. And it's another goal for Gregson. We're winning 4-0 away from home on the first game of the season. It bodes pretty well, considering we've lost some really major players. Great flick on. McGowan, good touch past his man. Just shoots nice and early. That seems to fall goalkeepers in this league. And he was down on one leg, but couldn't make the save. And it's 4-0. Ticking to the end of the full-time whistle. No more highlights. It's a 4-0 victory. Very good start to the season. I'm very happy with that. And as you can see, there are a couple of good performances from a couple of our new guys there. Blakeman put in two really good corners for a Yin San McGowan, who's not really featured for the team so far as a right winger. He's come in and done very well. Bradley didn't have too bad of a game. Uh, Bradley Jackson, sorry. Um, yeah, it's been a pretty good performance all round, I'd say. Fitzsimmons as well. 7.4 match rating on his first game. You can't argue with that. It's been a good performance from the boys. They've bedded in nicely. Hopefully... We can kick on from here. That is going to be the end of this episode for this week. Just the one game this episode, simply because of all the transfer malarkey and discussions at the start where we're talking about the new team. Hopefully, it's been a good, enjoyable episode for you to watch. If you did enjoy this episode, please subscribe. I'd much appreciate it. Trying to get as many subscribers as possible before the end of the year. We hit 25 last week, which that's a big milestone for me. I was really happy with that because we'd kind of lingered around, you know, 10 15 mark for a long time because you know when you start a youtube channel some of your friends subscribe some of your family subscribe if they have an account on youtube or whatever and then you know you have to pick up people from elsewhere so i'm really really grateful for those that have subscribed in the last week um if you enjoyed it please leave a like leave a comment if you enjoyed as well who's going to be the star man of this season that's what i wanted you to comment in the description very easy to say a yin san at this stage with that beautiful hat trick in that game but i think there's some good players in this team i think a couple have gone a little bit under the radar i think um perhaps our left wingers and right wingers might get a little bit more this season should be a good one really should be a good one i'll bring you back in in about a month then we'll have a double game special about a month into the season you can kind of evaluate where we are i can see who are my star men and i can tell you if there are any more transfers hopefully none of our big guys go but we'll see thank you very much for watching please check out all my socials and my twitch which is in the description um twitch.tv forward slash the underscore stick underscore bait stream at least three times a week continuing to stream throughout this year as many times as i can thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye and remember be kind to one another see you later